Basic scaffolding 1. Which type of accident kills the most construction workers? A. Being hit by a falling object B. Being run over by site transport C. Contact with electricity D. Falling from height Answer is, D. Falling from height 2. How is working at height usually defined? A. Working 1.2 meters above the ground or higher B. Working 2 meters above the ground or higher C. Working 3 meters above the ground or higher D. Working at any height that would cause an injury if you fell Answer is, D. Working at any height that would cause an injury if you fell 3. What are two of your responsibilities when working at height? A. Climb up the outside of the scaffolding B. Ensure you are sufficiently trained C. Ignore the safety briefing given by your supervisor D. Make use of access equipment E. Throw things to your colleague below Answer is, B. Ensure you are sufficiently trained D. Make use of access equipment 4. What should you do if you feel that a task working at height is unsafe? A. Borrow some work equipment from another job B. Carry on working and tell your supervisor when you next see them C. Stop working immediately and report it to your supervisor D. Work the problem out for yourself Answer is, C. Stop working immediately and report it to your supervisor 5. What is the main regulation that controls the use of suitable access equipment for working at height? HSG 33 Health and Safety in Roof Work B. Lifting Operations and Lifting Equipment Regulations C. Work at Height Regulations D. Workplace, Health, Safety and Welfare Regulations Answer is C. Work at Height Regulations 7. When can you use a ladder at work? A. If it is long enough B. If other people do not need to use it for access C. If you are doing light work for a short time D. You must never use a ladder on site Answer is, C. If you are doing light work for a short time 9. Who should check a ladder before it is used? A supervisor B. The manufacturer C. The site safety officer D. He person who is going to use it Answer is, D. He person who is going to use it 10. What is the best way to make sure that a ladder is secure and won't slip? A. Ask someone to stand with their foot on the bottom rung B. Tie it at the bottom C. Tie it at the top D. Wedge the bottom of the ladder with blocks of wood Answer is, C. Tie it at the top 11. What must you do when you are climbing a ladder? A. Have three points of contact with the ladder at all times B. Have two people on the ladder at all times C. Have two points of contact with the ladder at all times D. Use a safety harness Answer is, A. Have three points of contact with the ladder at all times 12. A scaffold guard rail must be removed to allow you to carry out a survey You are not a scaffolder Can you remove the guard rail? A. No, only a scaffolder can remove the guard rail and put it back B. No, only a scaffolder can remove the guard rail but you can put it back C. Yes, if you put it back as soon as you have finished D. Yes, if you put it back before you leave sight Answer is, A. No, only a scaffolder can remove the guard rail and put it back 13. How many people should be on a ladder at the same time? A. 1 B. 1 on each section of an extension ladder C. 3, if it is long enough D. 2 Answer is, A. 1 14. 
What should you do if you find a ladder that is damaged? A. Don't use it and make sure that others know about the damage. B. Don't use it and report the damage at the end of your shift. C. Try to mend the damage. D. Use the ladder if you can avoid the damaged part. Answer is, A. Don't use it and make sure that others know about the damage. 17. What is the right way to reach the working platform of a mobile tower scaffold? A. Climb up the ladder built into the tower. B. Climb up the outside of the diagonal bracing. C. Climb up the tower frame on the outside of the tower. D. Lean a ladder against the tower and climb up that. Answer is, A. Climb up the ladder built into the tower. 18. A mobile tower scaffold must not be used on what surface? A paved patio. Be a smooth concrete path. C. An asphalt road. D. Soft or uneven ground. Answer is, D. Soft or uneven ground. 19. You need to use a mobile tower scaffold. The wheel brakes do not work. What should you do? A. Do not use the tower. B. Get someone to hold the tower while you use it. C. Only use the tower if the floor is level. D. Use some wood to wedge the wheels and stop them moving. Answer is, A. Do not use the tower. 20. When is it acceptable to allow someone to operate a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, using ground level controls? A. If the person in the MUP cannot operate it due to an emergency. B. If the person in the MUP has to bump off to gain access to the work. C. If the person in the MUP needs both hands free to carry out the job. D. If the person on the ground is a trained operator and the person on the MUP is not. Answer is, A. If the person in the MUP cannot operate it due to an emergency. 21. When working in a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, where should you attach your harnesses lanyard? A. To a point on the structure or building you are working on. B. To the MUP handrail. C. To the control box. D. To the designated anchor point within the platform or basket. Answer is. D to the designated anchor point within the platform or basket. 22. If you have to work at height over or near to deep water, which item of personal protective equipment, PPE, must you wear? A full body harness. B full face respirator. C life jacket. D Wellington boots. Answer is, C life jacket. 23. What should you do if you notice your harness or attachment is damaged? A. Put the harness on, use it, and plan to tell your supervisor at the end of the day. B. Stop and tell your supervisor but carry on using it until it is replaced. C. Stop and tell your supervisor straight away. D. Swap it with a colleague's harness and use theirs instead. Answer is, C. Stop and tell your supervisor straight away. 24. When is it safe to cross a fragile roof? A. If you can see fragile roof signs. B. If you do not walk on any plastic panels. C. If you use crawling boards with handrails. D. If you walk along the line of the bolts. Answer is. See if you use crawling boards with handrails. 26. What is the best way to stop people falling through voids, holes or fragile roof panels? A. Cover them with netting. B. Mark the areas with red and white tape. C. Tell everyone where the dangerous areas are. D. Use secure covers that can take the weight of a person and add warning signage. Answer is, D. Use secure covers that can take the weight of a person and add warning signage. 27. You are working on a flat roof. 
What is the best way to stop yourself falling over the edge? Ask someone to watch you and shout when you get too close to the edge. B. Protect the edge with a guard rail and a tow board. C. Put a large warning sign at the edge of the roof. D. Use red and white tape to mark the edge. Answer is, B. Protect the edge with a guard rail and a tow board. 28. Who should erect, dismantle or alter a tube and fitting scaffold? A. Anyone who has the right tools. B. Anyone who is a project manager. C. Anyone who is trained, competent and authorized. D. Anyone who thinks they can do it. Answer is, C. Anyone who is trained, competent and authorized. 29. What is the maximum recommended gap between the scaffold and the structure? A. No greater than 225 mm. B. No greater than 300 mm. C. No greater than 470 mm. D. No greater than 600 mm. Answer is, A. No greater than 225 mm. 30. How do you identify the safe load rating for a scaffold platform? A. Ask the site manager. B. Ask the telehandler driver. C. Refer to the handover certificate or signage. D. The safe load is breached when the ledgers start to deflect. Answer is, C. Refer to the handover certificate or signage. 31. If you store materials on a working platform, which statement is correct? A materials can be stored anywhere, even if they pose a trip hazard or block the walkway. B. Materials can be stored unsecured above guard rail height. C. Materials do not need to be secured if they are going to be there for less than an hour. D. Materials must be stored so they can't fall and the platform must be able to take their weight. Answer is, D. Materials must be stored so they can't fall and the platform must be able to take their weight. 32. What is the best way to protect people below a scaffold from falling tools and materials? A. Make sure they are wearing safety helmets. B. Tell the people below to stop work and clear the area. C. Tell them you will be working above them. D. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Answer is, D. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.